Today we're here at the Sanctum Care Group and we're here for a fundraiser called Sanctum Survivor where a number of individuals will be spending the next 36 hours experiencing what it's like to be homeless and all the challenges that come with that. I'm going to require a wheelchair. We're going to see what this feels like. We're going to see the challenges that many people face all the time. I'll be tired and cold and really wishing for a warm, safe place to be. On behalf of our board and the individuals of Sanctum Care Group, I'd just like to express my gratitude today for all of you who've chosen to be out here. I think it's going to be truthfully a very humbling experience. <laughs> walking with a tank. It's an oxygen tank, and the reason I'm carrying it with me is because I, uh, I'm suffering the, uh, the effects of COPD. So I have limitations on my ability to breathe, and I'm breathing through a straw to, to give a sense of the limitation of the breathing. I have people on my team here relying on me to, to get us where we need to go, and yet I have to slow us down regularly because of it. We just decided we'd better get some food to last us over the next little while. It's a little heart-wrenching to imagine being a parent and um, trying to feed your child. We appreciate the food, but it's not the same as being able to go into the grocery store and choose. They can't come back more than once in two weeks, and the food they get here isn't enough for two weeks, so they're gonna have to have other sources so it was great to come to the Friendship Inn for a meal. Everybody is there for the same thing, not only for the delicious meal that was served today, but also for the sense of community. We were panhandling strangers across the street. I feel like there's a certain blessing that everybody gets when they give something. To stop and interact with that person I don't know what's going on in their life. Giving a little bit of what I have is usually pretty easy to do. We don't have regular shelter. We don't really have a place where we can go. So far, so good. Uh, caught a bit of rain, but uh, we've managed to find shelter from time to time. And in fact, we found an umbrella on the street. So that was a big stroke of luck for us. Right now, we're in the Methadone Assisted Recovery Service Clinic. And we were learning about uh, naloxone kits right now. So that's uh, an antidote for overdoses with opiates. Rather than practice on each other, we got to practice on oranges, the uh, technique for drying up the naloxone and then administering it. I've been playing Brittany, who is pregnant and scared and homeless. I'm learning how HIV testing is available to people in the community when they are ready for it in a setting that is easy access, non-threatening, and provides information for them to be able to make decisions about whether or not they want to be tested and what they think they'll do with that information once they have it. So you can see clearly there's just one dot at the top and no dots at the bottom, so that's non-reactive or negative, we say. It might not show up It makes me very nervous because I realize that as a physician and as somebody who provides care to women who are carrying another life, they are afraid not only for themselves but for their babies. And I felt that today. It's just difficult when things are unstable to regulate what you're eating and when you're resting and when you've got to be at your next like appointment to try and get through the day. When grow up in privilege, it's difficult to see outside of that. It's difficult to understand that perhaps it isn't choice that puts people in bad situations. Greg was given the challenge of dealing with diabetes, so he's had to take his blood sugar and go for appointments and like try to understand the medication. Hopefully it teaches Theo that what he has is not to be taken for granted for himself, but not to be assumed that other people don't have it through some floor of their own. I've learned that you don't have a home to return to. You probably don't know where you're gonna sleep next. We need to see that and try to 
change that. Everyone deserves to have a home with a roof and four walls. Our biggest struggle is, okay, first of all, we want to keep him warm. We want to keep him busy. We want to make sure that he's fed. There's not many organizations that are open after five o'clock. Luckily, we found the White Buffalo Youth Lodge, which is an amazing organization that helps so many kids in the community. The information has been overwhelming. One is because of everything that they do. The other is because of how many people they help and how much more help they need. Oftentimes, people who experience homelessness don't know where they're going to spend their night. Oh, the Salvation Army. I'll be spending my night at the Brief Detox Larson House. Spending your night in Kinsman Park. <laughs> and be calling Greg. <laughs> oh, God, no, I hate being on Smalls. There's so many services out there that are available, but the challenge is how do you know how to access them and how do you know where they are? This is a needle exchange van. It's a one-for-one -one needle exchange, but they also have things like snacks and warm clothing and things like that just to support people who are homeless. I'm sleeping at the Kinsman Park tonight, so I will be outdoors. I kind of suspected that might happen. I have my first piece of cardboard. I know I need several more. I have a piece of plastic in my pocket, and the kind ladies in the van gave me a tooth and some mitts, so I should be okay for the night. You know, I've lived in Saskatoon for a long time, and I feel like I'm seeing either a different city or a completely different side of my own city. My world in Saskatoon, I moved from point A to point B to point C and I have my head down and I'm going fast. And today I had to slow down and, and look at places and look at people that I don't think I ever really looked at before. Right now, I'm with a group from the challenge and we have been dealt the card of sleeping in the park tonight. And uh, as you can see, it's pouring rain. You are completely vulnerable to elements. Immediately, we're soaked through the jacket, you're getting chilled to the bone, you weren't quite sure where you could go for shelter and how long you could stay there. We found this canopy here, we have some picnic tables, and it uh, looks like we're gonna be eyeing these up for beds tonight. If we change our perceptions and if we change our focus and if we start to think about these things more and engage on them in a different way, and I think that goes beyond just writing a check. I think in the past, maybe I thought that was enough. I don't think that anymore. My day, it has uh, taken a turn for the better. Living here at the Salvation Army for the night, playing cribbage, eating yogurt, having coffees. I'm all, I'm all right. Having a nice warm place to lay down for a period of time, I feel pretty confident and grateful. I don't know each person's personal circumstance to how or why they became homeless, but I definitely have a new way of interacting with them to understand them. the sheer fact that they are homeless. At the end of the day, some of these people just need someone to listen to them and some compassion and caring. And that's what all the organizations down 20th Street do, and that's just so important. There are so many small challenges that add up into huge ones that it, it's still being on the street is, is, uh, is a full time job just surviving. Every year we brought in 10 individuals who this is not part of their basic scope or life. It's been life changing for them, and it's exciting to see. We need to recognize that these people are not faceless, that they have needs and they have desires just as we do. I'm ready to give Brittany up, but I'll help Brittany when I see her next. My perspective on the homeless will be forever changed.